and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic, and that is congenital toxoplasmosis. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of this video, I just want to say I did do a video on toxoplasmosis in adults. And if you guys want to give that video a watch to get the basis of this disease, that would be great. I will put a link for it in the description. So what is congenital toxoplasmosis? So the congenital toxoplasmosis infection occurs in fetuses whose mothers test positive for the toxoplasma gondii infection. Pregnant moms transmit this infection to their unborn baby by a process called transplacental transmission. This disease can cause miscarriage or stillbirth in severe cases, but may also cause progressive visual, hearing, motor, cognitive, and other problems in the fetus. So from this definition of congenital toxoplasmosis, we get that the disease is caused by this parasite called Toxoplasma gondii, and the fetus actually becomes infected when the mom is infected. So the mom gets the disease, and we'll take a closer look at how moms can contract the disease in a few minutes. But once the mom gets the disease, the parasites actually begin to infect the unborn baby by passing through the placenta. So these parasites are actually able to travel through the transplacental channels and in this way the baby becomes infected. So once the baby does become infected, it may actually cause some serious complications not just for the birth process but for the development of the baby's organ systems. And the majority of these pregnant moms will have premature babies, stillborn babies or even miscarriages during the infection. So now that we know what congenital toxoplasmosis is, Let's take a closer look at the signs and symptoms of this disease. So 50% of unborn babies who become infected with toxoplasmosis during the pregnancy will be born prematurely. The infection in the baby damages multiple organ systems, including the eyes, nervous system, skin, and the ears. The majority of the newborns will suffer from an enlarged liver and spleen, which is called hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. The baby will also present with swollen lymph nodes, which is called lymphadenopathy, vomiting, eye damage from the inflammation of the retina or other parts of the eye, feeding problems, hearing loss, jaundice, which is the yellowing of the skin and the mucosas, a low birth weight due to the interuterine growth restriction during the infection, skin rash, which presents as tiny red spots or bruising at birth, and vision problems. In more severe cases, where brain and nervous system damage is present in the newborns, they will suffer from fluid in the brain, which is called hydrocephalus, a large head size, which is called macrocephaly, or a smaller than normal head size, which is called microcephaly. The baby may also suffer from seizures and an intellectual disability. So in this image on the right bottom side of my screen, this is actually a classic case of congenital toxoplasmosis, and we see here the macrocephaly in the patient. We have an enlarged head size. This patient also had fluid in the brain, which is called hydrocephalus. This baby also suffered from damage to the eyes, which caused severe vision problems, and cirrhosis of the liver and enlargement of the spleen. So how does the mum contract toxoplasmosis during pregnancy? So pregnant mums may contract this parasite by eating undercooked contaminated meat, such as pork, lamb, venison, or shellfish like oysters, clams, or mussels. They can also contract the infection by drinking water contaminated with Toxoplasma gondii parasites. Moms may also contract this infection by accidentally swallowing the parasite through contact with cat feces that contain Toxoplasma. And this might happen during cleaning out a cat's litter box when the cat has shed Toxoplasma in its feces or touching or ingesting anything that has come into contact with cat feces, such as garden-grown vegetables. And in some rare cases, the mom may also contract the infection by receiving an infected organ transplant or infected blood transfusion. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of toxoplasmosis. So there are several tests that may be done during pregnancy, and they include amniotic fluid testing and fetal blood testing. We can also do the antibody titer, which means the IgM and IgG titers of the antibodies against the Toxoplasma gondii parasite. And we can also do an ultrasound of the abdomen because these patients usually suffer from multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. We will be able to note that on the ultrasound. 
We will be able to visualize the enlarged spleen, the enlarged liver, the hydrocephaly, the macrocephaly, etc. So after birth, the following tests may be done on the baby to confirm the diagnosis of toxoplasmosis. So we can do antibody studies again on the cord blood or the CSF, so cerebrospinal fluid, which is collected through a process called a lumbar puncture. So this is basically when a needle is inserted into the cerebrospinal space so that cerebrospinal fluid can be drawn and tested for the presence of the parasite. The baby can also have a CT done of the brain, which can show hydrocephaly, macrocephaly, microcephaly, etc. We can do an MRI scan of the brain, neurological exam, a standard eye exam, as well as the specific toxoplasmosis test, which is done by PCR. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of toxoplasmosis. So spiromycin is the drug of choice that is used to treat the infection in the pregnant mother. So this is actually the treatment algorithm that exists today and we test the mom early in the first and second trimesters. So if at four weeks we get a negative sera and then four weeks later we get a positive sera, we can begin the patient or the pregnant mom on spiromycin. We can then do amniocentesis and if positive, the drugs of choice is pyrimethamine and sulfadiazine. And this can be used to treat the fetal infections diagnosed during the pregnancy. And the treatment of infants with congenital toxoplasmosis most often includes pyrimethamine, sulfadiazine and leucophorin for one year. And newborns will also be administered steroids if their vision is threatened or if the protein levels in their spinal fluid is high. And that brings us to the end of this video on congenital toxoplasmosis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.